The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the May 31st, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We knew I make that one little two by four shift it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. Well, actually, it's just past eight o'clock in the morning. So if you are listening live, thanks so much for doing that. We'll make this show pertinent if you're listening in the normal time frame slot. Friday's show, we're going to be recording between eight and nine. Tomorrow and Thursday will be at the normal slot at uh, one o'clock. So let's go ahead and get this uh, show kicked off. Of course, if you are listening live, we'd love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you uh, are listening live, but uh, you don't want to call in or you can't call in, you can always send me an email like uh, Hector here has. Uh, send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers. Then will any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Hope everyone out there had a, a great uh, Memorial Day holiday weekend. Let's get to the uh, markets out here. Right now we've got equity futures trading lower. You've got the Dow off 234, the Nasdaq off 26. That was seven tenths and two tenths. Six tenths for the S&P, which is 26 points. The Russell is off about eight tenths or 14 points. Spot Volatilix right now is trading just above its 50-day exponential moving average. That's not necessarily a good thing. It's going to be the end of day reading that's going to be important. We'll take a look at that during the uh, show out here. You've got uh, trading over in uh, Asia last night. It was a mixed bag. You had the Shanghai close up 39 points. Now, the Shanghai is in a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. The Nikkei is also, even though it was uh, closed down 89 points, it still wants higher price, as does the Hang Seng, which closed up 291 points or 1.4%. In Australia, the Australian 200 closing down 1% or 75 points. A mixed bag over in Europe. You got the DAX off 144. That's just trading between a supply, uh, it, hit, it hit resistance and it's backed off. And the uh, FTSE is up uh, 30, boy, uh, 30 bucks, and that actually wants higher price out there. As far as the metals are concerned, you've got gold trading down about five bucks. That's a quarter of a percent, but silver's off two and six tenths percent, two and seven tenths. Fifty nine pennies trading out at twenty one fifty. Plaid's up up. Uh, platinum is up fourteen bucks. Palladium's off eight dollars. Copper is up uh, two pennies. Lights recruited is up three dollars and thirty one cents. Trading at one eighteen. I believe it's on its way to the one twenty six level. Natural gas. It's got a TD nine count top out there. We've taken a look at that. That's uh, trading down thirty four pennies at eight uh, eight uh, thirty eight. We've got the thirty year Treasury. Okay, we're taking a look at the September a future contract trading out one thirty nine nineteen. That's off one point and eleven ticks out there. So what does all this mean? Well, let's go take a look at my little nine panel market update chart. Friday was a uh, gigantic day in the markets, I don't have to tell you, but gigantic. You had the ES Mini get all the way up to resistance. You know that level we were, uh, and, and again, we recorded Friday's show earlier. We were talking about the market rally. We gave you the targets. I didn't think price would get up there in one day, but they did. What well, there being the top of its daily profile, and that's at the 4168 level. Now, what price has done, it's gotten up to that resistance area. It has backed off. It's trading inside its uh, weekly profile, and both its weekly and daily. And if we did get a close above 41.68, that's going to suggest a move up towards its descending trend line or the top of the profile in the 43.54. And that's the upper left-hand panel that you're looking at. With regard to the ES Mini or the S&P moving higher, it's all going to be about whether or not that spot volatilics gets back below its 50-day exponential moving average. It was back below on Thursday and on Friday. That's what uh, provided the uh, one of the elements that provided the energy 
for the markets to move higher. So if the spot volatilities, which is trading right now at 27.82, the 50-day exponential moving average at 27.46, if the uh, spot volatilities closes today above that 50-day level, that's going to suggest a further retracement or pullback. Could even be a top out there because price has run into resistance at the top of that daily profile. We'll take a look at the other charts and try to get some other signal information out of the NQ is trading inside its bearish structured daily profile. And that is between the price level of 12622 and 12995. The U.S. dollar index formed a TD9 count bottom. As long as the low holds, the low, by the way, would be the low of Friday. That low out there is at uh, 10107. You see a close below that, that's going to tell us uh, for sure that the U.S. dollar index is headed lower. But right now, what's likely to occur is price should go target the 102.30 level. That's the top of a new daily profile for the September contract for the U.S. dollar index. Goldilocks run into all kinds of resistance. You've got all kinds of trend line resistance. You've got the uh, top of its profile, daily profile, 1879. So a lot of resistance there that it's trying to get through. Silver found resistance at the center of its uh, bearish structured weekly profile. So what we know out here is a real key level for resistance is at 2226. Again, that is the center. And at the center of a weekly profile or a daily profile or any type of profile is where you have both buyers and sellers. When that center line is close to the top than it is to the bottom, it's uh, considered to be bearish in structure. Right now, you got light speed crude trading above its prior high at 116.43. If it closes above that today, that's going to suggest a move up to the 126 level. Natural gas, which formed a TD9 count top uh, last week, could be uh, signaling to you and I that price is going to go target the top of its daily profile, old resistance that could become new support. That's at $7.63. If we take a look at the 30 year treasury out here, uh, it uh, For four days, four sessions in a row, it traded above the top of the daily profile, which is 141.06. It may close above that today. Right now, it's trading below that at 140.22. If price does close back above that uh, 141.06 level out there, that's going to suggest a run to the 144.07. If it doesn't and price is pulling back, then it may be simply pull back into its bullish structured profile level. That's your support area. That's between 138.13 and 139.03. So that's what's going on overall. But let's go to the play-by-play -play out here. The one set of charts, this is all you need to know with regard to the rest of the day's action out there, actually. So with regard to the, at least the early morning trading out here, we're going to go take a look at the four equity future contracts for their 120-minute time frame, their two-hour time frame. Why are we doing that? Because this is where we have synergy. What you and I love to have is when we can get each of the four equity future contracts that are all lined up and are generating the same kind of message out here. Now, what is that message? Well, what you can see, uh, make sure, yeah, I've got the right ch charts up on the screen. To our time frames, each of them have formed TD nine count bottoms as we were coming on the air at 8 o'clock. Now, it makes those lows, this is a two-hour chart. So the bar that just completed was the 8 a.m. bar. The bar that we are in right now is the one that goes from 8 to 10. So you really won't have much information until about 10 o'clock. What's the information you're looking for? Well, it's this. If the ES Mini closes below 41.2150 as we come to the 10 o'clock time frame, price is going to go target 40.5150. That's its TD9 count breakout level. The NQ, the area to watch or the price level to watch, is 12.6150. You close below that. We're headed down to the 12 244 level. We'll com uh, continue looking at this set of charts here. We come back from this break. Then we'll go take a look at Lightsweed Crude. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. 
This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. You got uh, Dow equity futures are down 204 right now. NASDAQ's off 33. S&P's off 24. Russell's down 13. We're taking a look at the 30 minute, uh, uh, sorry, the 120 minute time frame charts here for each of the four equity future contracts. We covered the ES and the NQ so far. The Dow, the YM, the level to be uh, the the number to have down on your pad of paper is uh, going to be is uh, 32894. If there's a close up below that level. Well, now, it doesn't have to necessarily be 10 o'clock. It could be by noon. But the chunks here, the hours uh, for my charting application, is going to be uh, 10 a.m., 12, 2, and 4 with regard to the two-hour time frame charts out there. So any closes today below these levels, again, it was 41, 21, 50 in the ES, 12, 6, 15, 50 in the NQ, 32, 8, 94 for the uh, Dow. And the number in the Russell is 1869. If each of these close below those levels out there, that's telling us, we're looking at lower price on the 120 minute time frame chart because price will have failed at that level. And each of these have, well, uh, which would suggest to move to their breakout areas 40, 51, 50 in the ES, 1244, 12244, that is in the NQ, uh, 32,564 for the Dow, and the Russell would be at 183570. Otherwise, if those areas hold, because we've got TD9 count bottoms, then what price should do is make its way up towards resistance. Where is resistance? Well, right now, in the ES Mini, that's at about 41.58. In the, in the NQ, it's at 12.756. In the Dow, it's really going to be, give me a moment here, uh, 30, 33,205. 33, in, in the uh, Russell, It'd be 1887 that would be the resistance. That's coming from this 120-minute time frame. So we've got nice synergy here. That makes it pretty easy. The difficult is it's a two-hour time frame. It requires you to wait and be patient in order to get the proper signal out there. Let's go to our first question out here. This was from John in the Tiger's Den. This question is about Lightsweed Crude. So let's change over to our eight set of panel charts out there. And the question was... Uh, are there any signs of short-term ST, short-term charts displaying topping signals? I didn't really see the ST earlier out there. So short-term, the answer is yes. 
uh, daily, weekly, monthly? The answer is no. So let's go take a look at the bigger picture. We'll step through each of these out here. On the monthly time frame, uh, what we have out here, the only thing that we have is a bearish shooting star candle. Now, it's pretty tough, but, you know, is this an A to B equals CD pattern? It might be. So, in other words, if we draw the A to B line out here, it be I would draw it uh, that looks like, probably would really look like this. And then there was just simply a uh, one-month uh, pullback out there. If we uh, take this A to B line, let's move it up here to where that would be. And then pull this off the side. So, yeah. So, you've got, let's say, a confirmed buy, sell the D point that confirmed with that bearish shooting star candle. So, that says that that is your level of resistance. That becomes a price target, though. Price is trading inside that swing point. That level, by the way, is at uh, 125.83. So likely price is going to go target that level. Now, if it can close above that, then the sell the D point for the monthly time frame will have failed. That suggests higher price out there. The weekly time frame chart, the reason why I suggest that, uh, or the charts are suggesting that price should continue higher and that price will go target that uh, uh, shooting star is the weekly time frame. Weekly time frame has no topping signal whatsoever. Yes, if there were a bearish reversal candle like formed, it would generate a rose momentum indicator top. But price would also need to close below that green oscillator and change on. Otherwise, the signal would be neutral. But right now at 822 in the morning, the signal here is nothing but neutral. It is flat out bullish. If we take a look at the daily time frame out here, you are going to form bar number six today of a TD9 count, or you should form bar number six. That says that the, let's come back and take a look at this on Thursday and Friday. That's when you could get the uh, beginnings of a TD9 count. But otherwise, on the daily time frame, everything here looks uh, very bullish. Price is uh, trading above the high from March 8th. March 8th uh, was a, uh, a day that the that, uh, body of that candle was engulfed by the prior or by the following candle. Gave us nice bearish engulfing. And it says resistance is the top of the highest high of those uh, candles that were engulfed. That's at the 115.04 level. We're trading above that. We're at 118.65. So you're trading above a natural resistance level. This suggests higher price. But the question was, now that I see it clearly, were there any short-term topping signals? And the answer is yes. The 30-minute chart out here has a road momentum indicator top. That confirmed at uh, 6.30 this morning. And price is just trading with inside its daily pro or its 30-minute uh, profile. If price closes John below 118.37, certainly two consecutive closes below that, then what price should do is go target the uh, 117.41 level. That's the message of the 30-minute time frame chart. The 60-minute chart out there. I would likely believe I can draw in an A to B equals CD pattern. And we can do that. We've got the bearish reversal candle. Again, price consolidating with inside its profile. So you'd be looking for a close in here on a 60-minute time frame below 118.25 to then suggest a pullback to 115. Otherwise, you just have a consolidation after a top. That's a, a pretty normal pattern out here. The 120-minute chart has a TD9 count top that's in play. This could uh, take price back to 117.75. If price closed below that, then you're looking at 115.60. TD9 count top on the 240. Um, now, the cool thing about that pattern here, just like we did for the four equity future contracts for their 120-minute time frame, if price does close, John, above this TD9 count top, that means a 119.43. That's going to suggest, at least on the four-hour time frame, a strong momentum move to the upside. Otherwise, this TD9 count should result in price pulling back that oscillator and change line, 117.79. And if we look at the five-hour time frame chart, it appears that this will form a TD9 count top as well. But, you know, that top can form on the bar following bar number nine. So you'll get the confirmed TD9 count top at 9 a.m. But the question is, you've got to add more five more hours to that. So at two o'clock, as uh, there could be a higher high and still have a TD9 count pattern for the five hour time frame chart. So I hope that answers your questions. And again, the question was, does anybody see any short term topping signals inside of uh, like to be crude, and we've covered that clearly. But remember, the larger trend that is still in play here, the daily, weekly, and monthly, are all suggesting that price should continue to move higher. So I do hope that helps you out. The next question was from Hector and Patty. They are what we refer to as our fuel injectors. I don't know why. I just simply did uh, all those uh, years ago. And Hector and Patty say, happy early bird taco Tuesday. Back at you. Uh, is X, is ExxonMobil still building cause? And Google has a high volume daily high. Election year, this thing is a cash cow. Do the charts tell us it's headed to a top sooner than later? So let's take a look at Google first out here. And I'm just going to look at the patterns. 
I'm not going to go show the high volume daily high. I trust you on that. You're good. You're a good uh, technologist. So, um, so I believe you there. What I want to do is just go take a look at the chart patterns here, and for that, we'll go ahead and use our as soon as I can find it. Oh, it's all the way up here. We'll use our multi time frame set of charts to uh, figure out what uh, Google is or is not doing. So we take a look at the monthly time frame chart here for Google. It's got a nice road momentum indicator top, a TD9 count top, and it took price back to its support area. In this case, here is support area because it's a bullish structured monthly profile. So Hector and everybody else listening in, that's between the price range of 1959 to 2176. Price is pulled back after forming a top into a support area. The weekly chart last week was a bullish hammer candle, and that confirmed a Gartley buy pattern. That suggests around a 2463. Hector and Patty, we'll get back to this break. We'll continue looking at the charts for Google. Then we'll switch over and take a look at Exxon Mobil for you. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with the free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for Google, which last week uh, formed a nice bullish hammer candle that confirmed a Gartley buy pattern. That, that was a one that was an A to B equal CD to the downside was more than a one to one. The way that we know that that completes is because the market communicates to us. How does it communicate to us? It communicates to us by ge generating bullish and bearish Japanese candlesticks out there. And we had a nice hammer candle. Now, on the daily time frame, you had a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that also formed with a hammer candle, but it was also gapped to the 
the downside. So it was uncertain on May 24th which of the two was correct. Well, we now know that the two that were the the the, the uh, correct signal was a bottom signal out there. And uh, that was uh, proven again on Friday when price repaired that gap to the downside. Actually did it on Thursday uh, by uh, closing that, that gap, repairing that window. And then you had a gap to the upside on uh, Friday out here. So where the real resistance level is for Google, Patty and Hector is going to be at the, uh, oh, I take that back. There's a new profile that uh, formed out here. Uh, give me a second. Uh, so the top of that daily profile is, oh, geez, price closed above it. Interesting. Okay. So on a pullback, let's say we get a pullback out here, which right now we're not sure, right? We're going to, we're going to, if we get close to below those TD9 count bottoms out there, then that says we get a, a pullback. We should not uh, be surprised by a pullback, by the way. The market is very overbought, very, very overbought out here. So if we do get that pullback, then the level to be looking at for an entry into Google. And it's very difficult to see on this uh, white background chart here, but it actually formed a bearish structured daily profile out there. And so the ideal spot would be at 2134.28. Do we have any signal right now that that's what price is going to do? No. But in preparation, you'd say either the oscillator and change line, which is around the 2164-ish level. So I'd say 2134 to 2164, Hector, would be where you would be looking at. Uh, for Google out there, so it looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the other instrument you had an interest in, which was Exxon Mobil. And in the case of Exxon Mobil, uh, your question was, is still building cause for higher price out there, I believe. And so let's uh, give this uh, just a moment here for these uh, charts to uh, populate. XOM is the uh, ticker symbol that we're uh, waiting for here. And as we take a look at the monthly time frame as it populates, let's see here. We've got bar number nine that is going to complete this month. Now, that suggests on a monthly basis we could see a top form in Exxon Mobil between this month and next month. So by the end of June, we may have a monthly TD9 count top completed. The reason why I don't think that it's May that is the uh, top on the monthly basis for ExxonMobil. Today is May 31st. And if we look at the weekly chart, we're only in bar number five of a TD9 count. Price above its green oscillator and change line. Price is above the top of its profile. That's our old bullish signals out there. So, you know, in order for a monthly to top, you'd like to see the weekly and then the daily. Well, shoot, in the case of the daily on Friday, what price did was it negated its TD9 count top by closing above the bar following bar number nine. That is a very strong momentum move signal to the upside. So not really building cause, so to speak, here. Um, it's just simply got all the signals that it wants to continue to move higher, Hector um, and Patty. So uh, I see a couple of short-term signals from a top in a 30-minute chart. That went from the 130-minute chart, but nothing of significance, at least at this stage, because no levels of support were broken on uh, Friday. Today is obviously another trading day. But when we take a look at ExxonMobil, the charts are suggesting that they want higher price, uh, Hector and Patty. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. The next question, uh, let's see here, coming from Matt. Uh, hope you and your family had a great holiday weekend. We did. What do you make of the FTSE hanging at all-time highs? You've yet to, wrap, had yet to wrap your head around it. So with regard to the FTSE out here, let's take a look at its uh, charts. Right now, the FTSE is trading out at 76.25. Let's take a look at I'll put it on this uh, three-panel set of charts out here. That's going to be the easiest thing for me to do right now. There we go. Let's get this populated. Ignore, Matt. Just ignore, if you would, the – oh, geez. Got a lot of stuff out here. Let's clean these charts up just a tad. There we go. So we take a look at the uh, FTSE out here. Um, it's traded back into a. It's trading back into a potential resistance level, Matt, which is just simply the. Uh, if you take the high from February 10th and you take the high from uh, April the 8th to draw a little line across that, that's likely where price is uh, targeting out here. There is an A to B equals CD to the upside pattern that is also informed. So, and this this actually, well, let's start here. This formed a Gartley buy pattern. Let's take a look at that. So the Gartley buy pattern, the high out here, I mean, usually the high of April the 11th, the low is going to be the low from April the 25th, and the C point is going to be the high from May 5th. So you can see this formed a 1 to 1.272, A to B equals CD to the downside. That created a Gartley buy pattern because you had that nice move off of the lows from March 7th 
uh, all the way into the high that we used out there on the uh, April 11th time frame. So all Gartley buy patterns have five different potential outcomes. I, I, I'm sure that you, you're saying you can't wrap your head around it because you're you're expecting or anticipating that the markets overseas are just, uh, you know, just in in horrible shape out there. But let's just trade the chart patterns, you know, and not deal with it. Because right now, this is really a show about technicals, not about fundamentals, so to speak. Not that I'm against fundamentals, just simply this is really about technical charting patterns out here, looking for patterns that repeat. And so I mentioned there's five different outcomes. So the first three outcomes are retracements. They've already done that. The 382, the 0 0.618, the 0 0.786. We're back to that fourth one, which is basically 100% move of a move. That says that we want to watch the high out here. The high is actually... No, it's the same high. 76.69.56, uh, whether it's the April 8th high or the following day's high. So if price closes above that, then you're looking at the uh, potential of outcome number five. And outcome number five is that this turns into an A to B equals CD to the upside. So don't have that confirmation just yet. But if price does close above that 100% move of a move signal out there, then you're looking at an A to B equals CD that could take us up to the 80 40 level out there. And that's what's coming from the uh, daily time frame set of charts out there. Um, I don't know. Man, this is weird. Um, I don't know that there's anything else that I can provide to you. You don't know what's weird. My phone must have done an update. And now the mailboxes seems to be all screwed up out here. Thank you, Apple. Uh, you've read, you, you basically you've said you, you, you've yet to wrap your head around this. I, I don't know how to help you with that other than just simply from the charting patterns out here. But price, excuse me, price is running into resistance. There's no doubt about that. But if it can take that out, uh, <coughs> Matt, you're probably going to have to wrap your head around the fact that price wants to go target the 80-40 level out there. And that's just simply what the uh, message of the market of the uh, FTSE charts out. So I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. We had requ oh, was I showing those charts? Oh, my goodness gracious. I was not son of a gun. Okay. Hold on a minute here. I'm going to at least go back and show those charts out there. Stevie had a little brain contusion or brain fart out there. So here on the daily time frame again, you can see the A to B equals C that I've drawn in. You don't see the Gartley buy pattern. That was the one that, um, that bottomed out here around uh, May the 12th. And... Uh, so uh, sorry about that, Matt. If you need anything else, just to write back to me and I'll, I'll send you uh, something. My pleasure to do that. So let's switch over. Go take a look at a couple of requests that have come inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And, uh, folks, everybody should be a member of the Tiger's Den. It costs you $1 a year out there. I mean, what a, uh, what a great um, what a great way to – look, it's always about the company you keep out there. And I'd like you to keep more company here with the uh, group at uh, TFNN. Uh, if, if, if things are working out right for you, uh, then it's always good to get new voices. I say it's always good to get new voices. You just got to listen. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We're going to take a look at Goldfields and then the 10-year uh, note. And looks like Am, uh, Amgen as well. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should 
be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks, and thanks again for joining me early this morning at uh, 8.42 in the morning. If you're listening to the normal time frame, thanks so much for doing that. We will be recording uh, Friday's show between 8 and 9 as well, so hope that you can join us there. We'll be back to the normal programming hours tomorrow and uh, Thursday. So we're going to go take a look at uh, gold fields out here, uh, switch over to our multi-set of time frame charts out there. And on the uh, monthly time frame, we've got a confirmed roads momentum indicator top out there. That says price could be targeting 9.35. The uh, weekly time frame, I don't have any kind of a, a top or bottom signal here, um, So, uh, but support would be at 1020. On the daily time frame for gold fields, all that I have is a consolidation with inside its uh, daily profile. So your resistance level here is going to be 1250. A support on a pullback would be between 1097 and 1128. We say that because of the bullish structured profile out there. Now, is there an A to B equals CD to the uh, downside out here? Um, and the one that I would use, I, I would look at this high out here from April 18th. I go to the low of the 25th, and I'd go ahead and move that uh, bar, so move the A to B level, just see if we did get a one-to-one -one extension out here. And we really didn't. And we really did not get a A to B equals CD to the downside. So in the case of gold fields, it's, for me, from a technical standpoint, the tools that I use don't show the bo a bottom. That does not mean it hasn't bottomed just means that the tools that I use that show bottom aren't present. So what you'd be looking for here is if price can close above resistance, 1250, that would give you a change in trend character signal, certainly two consecutive closes above that. So right now, you've got resistance at 1250, support between 1097 and 1128. There's nothing else that I can add on the uh, gold field GFI uh, set of charts out there. So I do hope that that helps you out. There was a question to take a look at the 10-year note out there. So let's go switch over to those charts. This is the September contract that we're taking a look at. The uh, daily time frame, I don't have anything out here other than prices back inside its profile, maybe targeting the oscillator and change line in about the uh, 118 and change level out there. Uh, price on a five-hour time frame chart suggests that a TD9 count bottom will come complete by, um, well, really 2, two o'clock. You're going to get a confirmed TD9 count bottom at 9 a.m. That's going to be bar number nine. But price is below the breakout level of 119.09. And so it could be the TD9 count that takes place on the bar following bar number nine. That would be between 9 and uh, 2 p.m. The 120-minute chart, if it could get a, a bullish reversal candle, would confirm a roach momentum indicator signal. That's the same for the 60-minute chart. No bottom on the 30-minute chart, nothing on the 15, nothing on the 10, nothing on the 5 minutes. So all this is suggesting a bit lower price move inside of the 10-year uh, note out there. I hope that is a re I hope that that is uh, what uh, I hope that helps out uh, uh, whoever requested that. My apology. I just wrote down the the request, not the uh, uh, not the uh, uh, not who uh, wrote it. 
The uh, next one that we're going to take a look at is, uh, so you're saying right now it's trading at, uh, Goldfields is trading at 1093. So if it's trading at 1093, then I'm going to suggest, this is back to the Goldfields question. Here's what, uh, let me just switch charts out there. And I'm going to suggest that you be patient. And the reason is, is because, you know, that, that may be support. So here, here's, here's, the, here's the answer, saw number one. You don't know what kind of volume it's pulling back with. Uh, but it's trading into the swing point from May the 12th. That has volume of about 11.8 million shares out there. It's trading below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. But it's also trading, 1093 is basically trading right into this trend line. So I can see where you could take the long trade. Uh, but you would definitely close it out. So it would be a pretty simple trade. You would close it out if you saw a close below a uh, 1067 out there. That's the low of that May 12th level. That's one way to deal with it. Another way to deal with it is let this trade for a little while and see what happens. Do these areas of support hold? Because if they don't hold, then that tells us, well, you could pick up gold fields at about 1058, which would be the bottom of its weekly profile out there. So that's how I would uh, take a look at that at this stage here, uh, especially at, at least 846. So those are your two options. Uh, choose whichever one is appropriate for your trading style out there. So let's go to the next question, which was to take a look at Amgen. Now, we're going to have to get over to those charts. I'm going to have to populate them. That'll take just a, a moment, A-M-G-N. It won't take that long. And then, uh, you know, uh, well, and then we're going to take a look at the uh, euro for uh, Peter and Park City out there. So let's just give this a moment. I'll go take a look at what charts. Oh, I'm on the black charts anyway. So I'm going to change this over to the white background chart. So we'll take a look at Amgen. These are the eight panel set of charts out here. We'll let that get uh, populated. Amgen uh, closed out a, a trading session on Friday at, uh, oh, good Lord, at uh, the price point of 255.26. And that was above the top of its daily profile, but running right smack dab into its TD9 count breakdown resistance area of 255.90. I don't know. what Today, you could get a TD9 count top in Amgen that would uh, form between tomorrow. So this would be between Wednesday and Friday out there. The monthly time frame still has a Rhodes Mint indicator top out there. So resistance is up in that 280 level. Uh, the uh, weekly time frame... An A to B equals C D, so a Gartley cell pattern. That was formed with that shooting star. No, if Jam if Amgen can take out that level, that means a close above 258.39 on a weekly basis, that's going to be a signal to move back into the 280 area out there. Uh, that's coming from the weekly. You're above the profile on the monthly. So Amgen really should run higher. Now I don't know what's except for that daily time frame. So you need to see the close above 255.90, suggest a further move higher, but that also is going to then potentially trigger a TD9 count and says, well, I say move higher, but that might mean move higher for today and tomorrow. Maybe maybe the following day is a well out there. Uh, but that's what I see when I take a look at the Amgen charts. As far as the intraday signals out here, I do see some topping signals, but no levels, key levels of support that have been uh, busted through. I would use a 250.03 as a key level of support. If you see it close below that, Amgen is likely headed lower. So now let's go take a look at the Euro here for Peter and Park City. Uh, the Euro, I believe, has formed a, a TD9 count top. In a moment, we'll get to those uh, charts here, and that will confirm that uh, for us. That would mean that we would expect the Euro to get weaker, the U.S. dollar index to get stronger. So on a monthly time frame, the Euro is going to complete a TD9 count bottom. This is the bar following bar number nine. Uh, the weekly time frame chart, it has a buy the D point pattern that got confirmed a couple of weeks ago. As long as price remains above that oscillator and change line, you should see a further move higher. However, however, the daily time frame for the euro confirmed a TD9 count top. It exact odds of what the monthly chart says here. So what does that mean? What that means, or what the likely outcome should be here, Peter, is with the valid TD9 count top on the daily time frame, price should target its oscillator and change line. That's currently at about 105.9. That will change as price moves higher or lower. And if that level holds and we see price move off of that, that's probably a signal of a buy point and perhaps an A to B equals CD to the upside out there. If that level doesn't hold, Peter, then price should come back to 104.28. 
And if price closes below that, then it's probably curtains for the euro. The monthly uh, TD9 count bottom may fail out there. That's the downside action. Now, we don't have that. I'm just uh, sharing with you what to look for. And the what to look for right now is really being driven by the uh, TD9 count top on the daily time frame. So, yeah, we've got one on the monthly. Watch the daily for signals out there. I don't see anything really on the intraday charts here to assist you. So that's what I see when we take a look at the euro. I hope that it helps you out. That was Peter in Park City. And uh, so I'm going to get the uh, SMH charts here fired up. We'll get those on the uh, black background charts. This is for Nicholas out here. During the break, I'll go ahead and uh, put those on the white background charts as well. But here's what we know about the SMHs. They closed above the top of their bearish structured weekly profile on Friday. You get another close above 237.60. That's really a breakout message to suggest a move to the 256.29 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back to close out the hour here. Just a few. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, multi-time frame set of charts here for the SMHs. What we know is that formed a nice road momentum indicator top on a monthly chart. Price pulls back to its breakout level of support, 216.14. On a, a weekly time frame, you don't see it here, but there was a three drive to a bottom pattern that formed with this bullish hammer candle. You also had wave number seven, S letter G. So you had two bottoming signals. And what price has done here, uh, Nicholas, is price run right up into its uh, oscillator and change line. The actual print is 245.56. You close at 245.64 pennies above that level on Friday. You're trading below that now, but that's a real key area. If price is able to close above the red oscillator and change on a weekly time frame, That'll answer your question, will price get back to the uh, swing point high from May the uh, 4th out there? Now, that swing point had volume of about 10.4 million shares. You moved into it on Friday with uh, 4.6 million shares. But nonetheless, you get above, you close above that red oscillator and change line. That's going to suggest that the SMH would go target the 270 level. That's the center of its bullish structured weekly profile that price closed below that level. So there's nothing else that I see out here. Uh, it does show a, a short-term topping pattern that might form on the 130-minute uh, uh, time frame chart, the 65-minute time frame chart. So the fact that it's uh, pulling back just a little bit this morning is um, is really to be expected out there. So let's close out the show by going and taking a look at those 120-minute time frame charts out here. Oops, uh, let's get to those charts. Uh, just see if there's any new signals since we began our show together this morning. And the reason we were looking at the 120 minute, if you're just joining us uh, late here, is because each of them formed TD nine count bottoms as we came on the air at eight o'clock this morning. And uh, the levels to be watching there for support, close and below these, it would suggest lower prices. 41, 21, 50, 12, 6, 15, 50. So that was the yes. Last one I gave was the NQ. 32, 8, 94 for the Dow. Equity future contract. The Russell is 1869. If those levels hold, price should move higher. And if those levels fail, price should move lower out there. Folks, stay tuned. Tommy O'Brien is up next with the morning market kickoff. If you're listening at the normal time frame, then David White. Well, actually, you won't be listening to this message here. So just stay tuned for Tommy O'Brien. And I'll see you tomorrow at the normal programming time on Wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks.